Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Pimentel and today I'm here to talk about my master thesis, whose the title is Digital Model of a Three Phase Induction Motor in Phase Coordinates Based on EMTP, Electromagnetic Transient Problems. Uh, my supervisor is Professor Bonato and my co-supervisor is Professor Marti. Uh, I have chosen uh, these talks to talk about today. First, I will introduce, uh, introduce the, the, the term. Uh, in the introduction, I'm going to talk about the relevance of the topic, the objective of this work, and the motivations. After this, I will present the electrical equations of the model, the phase of induction motor model, and the mechanical equations. Uh, finish presenting all these equations, uh, I will present the, a flow chart to implement the phase domain induction motor model. Uh, next step, results and analysis, uh, multi area tevenant equivalent, multi level mate, and lastly, uh, the conclusions. So, uh, relevance of the topic. Uh, why is it important to, to study uh, a digital model of a three phase induction motor in phase coordinates? So, a three phase induction motor is the most used type of electric motor. It's used in electrical, uh, industrial, residential, commercial facilities. Advantages with respect to the DC motor. Uh, when we compare the DC motor, the induction machine has the advantage of simplicity, robustness, uh, low maintenance cost, and a long service life. And I'd like to highlight here that with the advancement of the power electronics, uh, it may be possible to control the speed of the induction machine. Uh, the use of electric motors is a subject of a great economic importance, and I have listed here two reasons. Uh, electric motors account for 46% of global electricity consumption, and in the industrial sector, Electricity consumption may reach 69% when we talk about uh, electric motors. So, uh, with all these considerations in mind, uh, uh, it's, it's important that the engineer has an accurate model of the induction machine. Uh, therefore, uh, with this uh, computational model applied to the induction machine, it may be possible uh, uh, to clearly represent the, the stress state and transient uh, response. Objective of this work. So, uh, the objective of this work is to review uh, the development of a digital model of a three-phase induction model in phase coordinates. And the contributions, uh, I have listed two. A comparative analysis of simulation results. Uh, I, I have made some simulations in, in ATP, ENTPRV, and Simulink, and I have compared the, the response. And after this, uh, I conducted a statistical analysis of, simula of simulation results. So, two contributions for this work. So, uh, let's move on to another section. Now, I'm going to, to explain the phase domain induction machine model. Uh, first, uh, the, uh, I'm going to explain the electrical equations of the model. And next, the mechanical equations of the model. Uh, in the electrical equations of the model, uh, the solutions of the differential equations for the voltage in 
the state or in the router circuits of the induction machine. Uh, in these uh, voltage equations, we have time invariant mutual inductances, and we we use the trapezoid integration rule to discretize the differential equations. And in the mechanical equations of the model, we're going to see uh, a solution of the rotor speed and electrical torque equations, and we're going to understand how to predict uh, the rotor angular position. So, uh, electrical equations of the model. So, as you can see here, we have uh, the stator circuit in the left side, and we have the rotor circuit in the right side. <coughs> The stator circuit uh, is stationary and the rotor circuit rotates uh, at an angular velocity called omega r. Uh, right here, uh, we have all the voltage equations for the stator and rotor of the machine. The first three equations uh, represent uh, the voltage equations in the stator and the last three equations uh, represent uh, the voltage equation in the rotor. As we can see, uh, voltage is equal to resistance times current plus d lambda over dt. Uh, in this expression, lambda uh, it's the flux linkage in the circuit. And right here, uh, we have some example of flux linkage in the stator phase A and in the rotor phase A. And note that in all the expressions, uh, we have a time varying mutual inductance between stator and rotor. Uh, continuing the explanation, uh, represents all the, the flux linkages in a matrix representation, we get this representation. We have a vector of uh, flux linkages that is equal to a inductance matrix times a, a current vector. All these inductors that I have presented here uh, have a meaning. So, for example, LAA is equal to MBB, and that's equal to LCC, and it's equal to LLS plus LMS, and so on. So, if we compare, LLS and LLR are leakage inductors of stator and rotor wide respectively. LMS is the magnetizing inductance of the stator ride, and LMR is the magnetizing inductance of the rotor ride. LSR is the amplitude of the mutual inductance between the stator and rotor riders. Okay? So, uh, if we apply uh, the trapezoidal integration rule on voltage equations, so uh, we apply the trapezoidal integration rule in these voltage equations right here, and uh, we get this expression for the voltage equations in the rotor and in the stator. In a compact form, we have that. The voltage equations is equal to a, a resistance matrix times current plus 2 over delta T times uh, inductance, inductance matrix times a current vector plus a voltage history terms. Uh, note that in, in this expression, uh, Rs represent all the, the stator resistances, RR represents all the, re the rotor resistances, LS um, it's a submatrix that represents uh, 
uh, all the inductances uh, related with the stator side LR uh, represent all, all the inductance <coughs> uh, related with the rotor side and LSR uh, it's a submatrix that represents all the inductance related with the stator and rotor side this is the time uh, the time pair mutual inductances uh, so uh, in the last slide I, I've talked about the history terms and in a compact form we have this expression for the history terms, the voltage history terms so uh, the big difference between this slide and the other slide is that we have this minus sign right here and this minus sign right here and uh, we have the apostrophe in all these variables that means that these variables are represented in a preceding time step okay so uh, after uh, we, we see all these uh, electrical equations uh, now I'm going to, to present the discrete phase domain induction machine electrical model so as we can see right here uh, we have the, the rotor circuit represented here and the stator circuit represented right here and we have the, the rotor resistances here the stator resistances right here and uh, uh, we transform the inductances that are represented here in a digital equivalent of resistances uh, plus uh, voltage history terms therefore uh, the induction machine uh, it becomes a digital model with resistances and digital equivalent resistances and uh, voltage history terms we don't have uh, any more the mutual self inductances in this model uh, electrical parameters of a three phase induction model so as, as we see before we have this inductance matrix that I have presented before so now we're going to compare this matrix with the manufacturer's data so after a series of studies uh, we have concluded that uh, LLS is equal to L1 LLR is equal to L4 and L1 and L4 uh, it's a uh, manufactured data and represent the leakage inductance of stator and rotor coil respectively uh, another example LMS is equal to it's equal to 2 over 3 times LM LMR is equal to 2 over 3 times K squared times LM and LSR is equal to 2 over 3 times K times LM one more time L, M, E and K represent a uh, manufactured data and L, M is the magnetized inductance of the machine and K represents the rotor right to stator right effective terms ratio now uh, I'm going to present a solution for the stator and rotor currents so uh, we use this expression that I have shown before and uh, I have wrote this equation right here in a different way just to simplify the calculations and after a series of calculations we get uh, the rotor current that is represented by this expression right here and we get the stator current that is represented by this equation right here
Now, uh, I, I have finished uh, talking about the electrical equations of the model, so let's move on to the mechanical equations of the model. First, uh, let's talk about the electromagnetic torque. Uh, the electromagnetic torque is obtained by solving the following relationship. Uh, electrical torque is equal P over 2 times DWF over D theta R. P is the pole numbers of the machine. Uh, WF uh, is the storage energy uh, in, the, in the machine coupled field and theta r is the rotor angular position so we derivate this expression right here and we get uh, the, the electromagnetic ex expression note that uh, the electromagnetic torque is dependent of the, the pole numbers the LMS inductance uh, the stator current vector, a sinusoidal matrix, uh, the K element, and the stator, stator current vector. Okay, so uh, the rotor angular speed is obtained by solving the following differential equation. So, acceleration torque is equal to electromagnetic torque. TE minus mechanical torque TM that is equal to 2 over P times J D omega R over DT plus 2 over P times D times omega R. Uh, in this expression, J represents the inertia of the machine and D represents the damping coefficient. So, uh, if, if we apply the trapezoidal integration rule in that expression, so we apply the trapezoidal integration rule and we get all this expression to represent uh, the rotor speed in the machine. Okay, we have talked about the electrical equations we talking about the mechanical equations. Now we have all the conditions to to represent, to show a flow chart to implement the phase domain induction motor model. So if we follow these steps right here, we can uh, implement uh, the algorithm in any computational platform. So. Uh, first, step, first step is predict the value of the rotor speed. So uh, we use this equation right here to predict the value of the rotor speed. After this, uh, we calculate the, the rotor angular position using this expression. Now, with the rotor angular position, uh, we have uh, the condition to calculate the inductance matrix. So we calculate the inductance matrix. So uh, continue. Uh, now I'm going to present the flow chart to implement the phase domain induction motor model. So uh, first step, we predict the value of the rotor speed. The next step is calculate the rotor angular position. After this, we calculate the stator and rotor currents. Calculate the electromagnetic torque and lastly we calculate the rotor speed. So if we follow these steps, we can implement uh, this flow chart in any computational platform. So now results and analysis. Uh, transient simulation with the phase domain induction machine model. So in this section I'm going to present a test case that I have uh, simulated in ATP, EMTP, RV and Simulink and after this I compare the results with the phase domain model. 
uh, this kind of machine uh, whose directed power is 2250 HP it's a machine that can be used in the oil, oil pump station uh, in, a, in remote areas for example so right here we have some parameters used in the simulation uh, line to line voltage 2.3 kV number of poles 4 k parameter is equal to 1 the damping coefficient is 0.1 speed uh, 1786 rpm rated current it's about 420 inertia uh, is 63.87 kilograms times meter square and lastly we have the, the electric parameters of the machine so uh, we simulate the induction machine starting with no load on the rotor shaft and for the, the state of current we get this graph uh, note that uh, we only can see uh, the, the phase domain curve so I, I have decided to to give a zoom in this part of the graph and I'm showing here uh, all the curves we have in the black color uh, the EMTPRV curves in the red color we have the ATP curve magenta color signaling and the blue one represents on the graph we have the phase domain uh, model Uh, right here, uh, I'm presenting the, the electromagnetic torque, and again, as you can see, uh, we only can see the phase domain curve. The, the other curves we see when we give a zoom in this part of the graph. So, uh, with a zoom, we can see all the curves represented right here. And to, to finish this part of, of comparisons, uh, the last graph is about the rotor speed. Uh, one more time, we have we did a zoom in this part of the graphic, and we can see right here all the curves plotted uh, with some difference, uh, small difference between all the graphs. Uh, statistical analysis of simulation results so now in this part uh, of the work I'm going to present some results of a statistical analysis that I have conducted in, in the software uh, Minitab uh, and uh, in my presentation here I'm showing the results for the analysis of variance but in my dissertation paper uh, I have presented the parity test and in why I decided to change the, the methodology to analyze the results uh, because uh, when we compare uh, the four samples the best way to compare is it's using one way or another so uh, I have conducted uh, analysis of variance and hypothesis test and we have concluded for the, the state on current when we compared phase domain ATP symlink ENTPRV that uh, all, all the means compared are similar to each other. We have a F value equal to zero and a high B value it's equal to one. So this shows that the means are similar to each other. We can see the, the results in this graph right here. Uh, inside the one way ANOVA, we can conduct a Fisher pairwise comparison, and uh, after the test, we, we concluded that all the variables, all the state occurrence, are in the same group, the group A 
So what this means? Means that there is no difference between the average uh, in phase domain EMPP, RV, ATP and Simulink. We can see this again in one uh, graph that represents uh, all the comparisons that I have done. So now uh, I have conducted one way and over for the electrical, electromagnetic torque in all the models that I have compared and again we get uh, F value equal to zero and the P value is equal to one. So the conclusion is there is no difference between the models until now. Uh, Fisher pairwise comparison show the same thing. Uh, all variables that I have compared, we get the letter A. That means that there is no difference between the models. We can represent this in this graph right here. Uh, difference of means for uh, electrical torque in all the models that I have presented. And uh, to conclude the statistical analysis, I have conducted one way and over analysis of variance in, in the rotor speed of all models uh, and the same, the same result, F value is equal to 0 and P value is equal to 1. The results can be shown in this graph right here that shows that we can conclude there is no difference between the means. Same thing we can see for the pairwise, Fisher pairwise comparison, uh, letter A in all groups, and the graph here that represents there is no difference between the means. Multi error Thevenin equivalent. So uh, now uh, uh, I'm going to, to present the multi error Thevenin equivalent main concept. And this concept was first introduced by Marty in an internal report to his research group. So uh, we have this large electrical system represented in this figure uh, and we divide it uh, in three subsystems. We have the subsystem A, subsystem B and subsystem C. Uh, note that in all subsystems we have links uh, interconnection links. So, how the how the the main concept works? So first, uh, we solve the subsystem A, B, and C separately, but we preserve the individual individuality of each subsystem. After this, uh, we we find the the Thevenin equivalent of subsystem A, Thevenin equivalent of system B and the equivalent of system C. Uh, after this, uh, we solve each one of the subsystems, the, inter the, the interdependence of the subsystems, and uh, at the end, uh, we calculate all the nodal voltage by injecting the currents uh, in the links. So, the main computational advantage of the MATE algorithm over, for example, uh, the sparsity, uh, sparsity technique uh, is realized when we use uh, this algorithm in multiple processors, in multiple computers or multiple processors. multi-level mate concept. So, uh, we use this figure right here to represent uh, a multi-level mate and we can see that the multi-level mate is one extension of the mate concept and what we have done here is we divide uh, each subsystem in sub-subsystems 
So, for example, uh, in the subsystem A, we have three sub subsystems. And when we solve uh, this matrix represented right here, we can find the solution for this system here. So, uh, implementation of the phase domain induction machine model use the multi-level mate concept. So, if we apply the multi-level mate concept in the induction machine, uh, we get uh, this example right here. We divided uh, this figure in two parts, subsystem A uh, here and subsystem B, here. subsystem B, sorry. Uh, subsystem B is the, the external source and subsystem A represents the induction machine. Uh, inside the subsystem A, we have two sub subsystems, the subsystem A1 and the sub subsystem A2. The sub subsystem A1 represents the electrical equations of the model, and the sub subsystem A2 represents the mechanical equations of the model. So, if we solve this matrix right here, we can get the solution for the phase domain induction machine model use the multi-level weight concept. Okay, conclusions. Uh, modeling the rotating machines directly in the phase domain will facilitate the integration of these elements to the external network. So, uh, just Remember, there is no need to use, uh, in this representation, the DQ0 transformation. From the ANOVA test, we can conclude that the average between the models are similar to all variables that we compared. So, I have compared the, the stator current, the electromagnetic torque, and the rotor, and the rotor speed. So, we didn't find a uh, big difference between all the models that we compared. So, uh, therefore, phase domain induction model is accurate. And for real time simulation, the multi area terminal equivalent concept is advantageous. Article submission. Uh, I have submitted an article to Induscon, and fortunately, it was accepted, uh, and the title is A Review of a Phase Domain Induction Machine Model for EMTP Based Simulation. Induscon is the International Conference on Industry Applications. Future work uh, it's recommended to research methodologies that enable to take the K parameter. So we need to study a little bit more about how to, to get the, the K parameter. Uh, in my simulation, I adopt the K is equal to 1. Uh, second, uh, we need to, to implement a phase domain induction machine model considering the saturation effect and modeling of several induction motors in the phase domain considering the existence of a small electric system with transformers, transmission lines and besides that analyze the behavior of these motors considering the different scenarios. So future work I recommend these three points. So thank you so much for your attention.